Right then, okay, I think this is gonna, all going to go horribly wrong, um, but that's the nature of science. Right, okay, ready. Right, basically, uh, I'm going to start off telling you what I do as a day job. Uh, I work for the University of Bristol on one of the CERN projects, the Large Hadron Collider, uh, where we just got a big underground ring. Uh, we take particles, whip them around, smack them together, see what comes off. That's basically it. As you can see, it's a pretty big ring. If it was set in Bristol, that's how big it would be. Um, and basically what I do is detector design. Um, we're going to do an upgrade on one of the detectors in about two, three years' time. Uh, so I kind of work towards that, doing simulations. And that's the bad boy there. As you can see, that's pretty big as well. Um, that's the thing about particle physics. Everything is pretty big, except the particles. Um, <laughs> but um, I think it's a brilliant job. I'm quite a curious person. And I'm basically paid to just ask questions like, why, why does that do that? Why, how does that work? Um, and I try and feed this on. I, I volunteer at Bristol. Um, and what we do there, we have exhibits and things, uh, so people can come in. Uh, we've got some fun stuff that people can try out uh, and learn some scientific principles. And another thing we do is we have portable exhibits that we take out into schools, uh, shopping centres, uh, places like that, where we just set them up and try and get hold of people that wouldn't normally come to a science centre. And we kind of grab hold of them as they're walking past and say, hey, look, science, great. Um, <laughs> so try doing that. The thing is, um, when we're doing that, we, kids love it. They, they flock to us. Teenagers, not so much, because I think they think it's not cool, but they're wrong. Um, <laughs> but also, uh, the pensioners, they're the easiest to catch, because they don't run very fast. <laughs> but they're, they're possibly the least interested. One of the things they say is, I'm too old for that. And I say, that's absolute cod wallop. So, um, unfortunately, the audience here tonight is a bit below my target age. So what I want you to do is try some of this stuff um, and show your gran. Right, so the first thing, right, as you can see here, I've got a laser here, shining straight through the bottle, just a normal laser pointer, nothing special about that. As you can see, shines straight through the bottle onto my hand there. Um, and I've got a hole in this bottle. And I really meant to take the top off this bottle before I started this talk. <laughs> right, there we go. Right, what's happening is, uh, you can see the laser's no longer there. What's, the laser is actually bouncing down inside the water. And if I put my hand there, I'm not sure if you can see it. You can see where the spot of the laser is? Right? Now that, that is science. Um, so, in a few slides time, I'm going to come up with, right. I've got time to explain it, so you're going to have to Google this. It's a thing called total internal reflection. Basically, what happens is, uh, if you shine a light on something uh, through, like, plastic, when it hits the medium, It'll, it, you can make it bounce around inside, and that's how fiber optics work, which takes your, your interwebs to your house. Um, right, next one I'm going to do. A couple of people are going to hate me for uh, moving this stand. Um, if you give me a second. Right then, this is basically the Doppler effect. And I don't think this is going to work because my guitar tune is not loud enough for anyone to hear. Right, see if this uh, kills anyone. Right. As I do this, because I'm swinging this round and it's not moving relative to me at all, I can hear no change in the tone. But hopefully, if anybody can actually hear this, as it swings towards you, it'll be higher in pitch, and as it swings away, it'll start going down in pitch. So if you can't hear it, try it at home. <laughs> right. And you need a friend to... Uh... Right. Basically, what's happening is, as it swings towards you, the wave fronts bunch together. As it's moving away from you, they, they spread out. Right. So basically, I want you to try all this stuff at home. There are loads of resources of things you can do, other stuff you can do. Like, I didn't think of any of this stuff myself. Uh, Up Bristol has got a great website there. If you uh, go to that and they do these things that I can't explain, so I'll just set that up now. Um, they also do some good shows and stuff. And if you go along there and you see anybody in red T-shirt, <laughs> Uh, with that bristle sign, ask them uh, if you've got something you can show me, and they'll be, yeah, here you go, science. Um, right, what else we got? Um, Institute of Physics, there you go, nick that idea from there. If you go to that website, they've got these cartoons, Marvin and Milo, go to that website, try some of that stuff. Um, what else we got? Um, I asked some of my teacher friends where they get their ideas from, um, and they said they just go on YouTube. If there's something... <laughs> No, I'm serious. If there's something they, they want to demonstrate, they look on YouTube, 
nick that idea and try it in the classroom. So if you try anything, film it. If you come up with a new idea, film it, stick it on YouTube so other people can try it. Right, and I think I'm pretty much out of time. But if you want to soak a fire in vodka and get a lighter, get a lighter that works, I'll show you in the bar later. Thanks. <laughs>